for George and Leo. And now, children, at the end of our Halloween story hour, an hour for which I was paid the princely sum of $5.15. <laughs> but that's another scary tale. I'll tell you the legend of Rumsey Reeve. Many Halloweens ago, this very house was owned by the cruel Captain Rumsey Reeve. And one night, his crew crept up on him as he slept and shoved a harpoon into his belly. <laughs> and Rumsey died right here. <laughs> his ghost haunts this very house, and he will appear if anyone says his name three times. Say it with me now, children. <laughs> Rumsey Reeve! Rumsey Reeve! Rumsey Reeve! Children, I'm afraid that ends our story, Alice. It's Rumsey Reeve! <laughs> I think this will be the last year we do this. <laughs> That's a terrific story you told there, Ambrose. Well, thank you. Except none of it is true, right? Well, on the contrary, it's all true and quite well documented. I mean, Rumsey Reeve died right here in his house? Yes, right here. <laughs> and over the years, people have reported seeing his ghost. Yeah, but none of you guys have ever seen his ghost, have you? No, but I have seen some odd things happen in this building. Paychecks mysteriously shrink. <laughs> Benefits disappear. Christmas bonuses dematerialize right before your very eyes. And uh, don't forget the, uh, the scary floating pink slip. Can I get a straight answer here? Now, come on. Is there a ghost in this house or what? Well, there is a, a being that inhabits this building and won't leave for all eternity, but that, that would be you. <laughs> what, what, what are you doing? I happen to be a very superstitious man. If I'm going to live here, you know, I... I just want to be sure I'm safe from those spirits, that's all. Well, would you mind being uh, superstitious into a tissue? <laughs> I have to be very serious about this, George. You know, when you're a gambler, you go with your hunches and your intuitions. Yeah, you believe in uh, luck and magic and, yes, even ghosts. Yeah, it may be funny to you, but staying in touch with those secret, uh, invisible spirits is why I have what I have today. Six Banlon shirts. <laughs> yeah, well, go ahead, make fun. Yeah. There is a dipic in this house, a golem, a tybal, and I gotta get some air. You know, when he speaks Yiddish, he's upset. Uh, maybe you could help me scare him into getting his own place. For minimum and no bennies? What are you, Miss Sugarna? Knock it off. No. Hey, Dad. Hi. Listen, uh, we've been arguing about names. I was wondering if you had one of those what to name the baby books. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's entitled the big what to name your baby book. Oh. Oh, look at all the candy. I guess you're ready for Halloween, huh, George? Oh, you have to be around here. I mean, if you run out of candy, things can get uh, a little ugly. Dad, they're just little kids. How bad can it be? Oh, really? Yeah. I, t I tell that to Johnson across the street. Last year, he ran out of candy. He hears a knock at his back door. He opens it. Nobody's there, but there's a bag on fire. Now, naturally, he wants to put it out, so he starts stomping on it. I don't even have to tell you what was inside. <laughs> then he hears the front doorbell ring. He runs through the house, you know, tracking stuff all through the house and carpet. Oh, no. Yeah. Poor bastard. <laughs> yeah, they broke him. <laughs> they broke a man who was on Guadalcanal. <laughs> Why are we fighting? I mean, doesn't it seem like we're at each other's throats all the time lately? Well, I know why I'm cranky. I've been pregnant for seven months. You know, I'm, I'm bloated. I'm uncomfortable. Yeah, and I've been a little on edge. I got a lot on my mind. I'm going to be a father in a few months. Eight weeks, Dad. Eight weeks? 
Oh, my God. How, how, how did this happen? You know, I... I was in high school a half hour ago. Honey, you know what I need? I, I'm just, I'm so tired. I'm so uncomfortable. I just, I need a little time out. I know, you're right. I'm sorry. I mean, you, you're pregnant. You've been working so hard. You know what you need? You need to take our vacation money. Go check into the Harbor Inn for a night, huh? Spread out in a big bed, soak in the tub, all by yourself, away from the restaurant. Oh, God, that sounds great. And also, go over to Dad's bookstore, get yourself a nice trashy novel to relax with tonight, huh? And let's neither one of us think for even one moment about this, this huge life change that's gonna happen to us in a few months, okay? Mm, eight weeks, Dad. Stop saying that! <laughs> Does uh, everything add up, Ambrose? Everything except how a talented, promising young man such as myself wound up in this job. <laughs> okay, then. Good night, Leo. Are you guys leaving so early? <laughs> it's only, uh, 5.20. Yeah, but, uh, trick-or-treaters arrive early. And I have a costume party at Carly Simon's in an hour. Well, that sounds exciting, Ambrose. What are you going as? A waiter she hired. <laughs> Good night, Leo. Uh, George, <laughs> why don't you stick around, huh? Well, let's talk. We never talk, do we? <laughs> you know what I'd really like to hear about? That uh, mutual fund you ran. That sounds uh, fascinating. Just tell me all about it. Well, um, 87 was, was an interesting year. Um, the, the day after Black Monday, a lot of people were saying, you know, to, to go into treasuries or, or cash instruments. But I, I had a, a gut feeling that the, uh, the tech sector was... Poised to take I've off. been telling my Julia Brow story. <laughs> Good night, Leo. No, no, come on, George. <laughs> come on, George. Don't, don't, don't go just now. I, I, I don't want to be alone. You know, I, I mean, you're a grown man. I, I can't believe you're, you're, you're afraid of ghosts. Well, you know, I, I admit I have a healthy respect for ghosts, but uh, I'm not a fearful man, if that's what you mean. I used to work for Sam Giancana. Okay. I sat in a sauna with John Gotti. Okay. And, uh, and now you're afraid of. Rumsey Reed. <laughs> Rumsey Reed. Don't you dare say that a third time. Cherry! Well, what, what have we here? A witch. A witch. Walter Cronkite. <laughs> well, here's for the witches. There's for Walter. Uh, you know, I know Mr. Cronkite lives on the island, but it's still kind of an unusual choice. When you dress up like him, he gives you the whole bowl. <laughs> Hi, who, who are you? I'm Zordon of Velvo, whose mission is to kill everything in his path. Well, uh, mission accomplished. You, you killed all my gardenias. <laughs> Hey, Dad. Hi, Ted. What are, you, what are you doing here? I just thought I'd come by. So you're doing with little trick-or-treaters. Where's, uh, where's Casey? Oh, she, she checked into the Harbor Inn for the night. She just needed to get away. You know, our apartment's so small. She's so uncomfortable. You know, she's just a few months away from giving birth. Eight weeks. <laughs> well, eight weeks is two months, and two months is a few. Why, why are you getting upset? No, I'm going to be a father, Dad. You know, I mean, in a few months I'm going to have this crushing responsibility, and it's just for some reason hitting me tonight. Well, you know, when you get upset, you, you eat, so, so stop it. You got plenty of candy there. What is... Gumbo bears, Snickos, Millieways. <laughs> you really know how to suck the joy out of a holiday, don't you? <laughs> well, when you, when you use brand names, you're, you're just paying for the advertising. Don't eat all my L&Ms, all right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be a father. My God, what, 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 I'm looking at what? 18 years of responsibility? <laughs> 18 years. Yeah, hang on to that dream. Dad, what if I'm not a good father? You know, what if I can't hack it? What if I don't measure up? <laughs> 18 years. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> Okay, easy now, Leo. 
You, you can get through this. Everything's cool. Just turn on the light and uh, sit down with a book. Ah, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls by Jacqueline Suzanne. <laughs> ah, good, a classic. <laughs> Glasses. I can swear I left the lights on. <laughs> Rumsey? Are you here? We're both Jackie Suzanne fans. <laughs> That's something, isn't it? Our cover girl said... Okay, here's for the fisherman. And this is for the fish. I'm not a real fisherman. And he's not a real fish. <laughs> Those aren't really Snickers. <laughs> oh, uh, Ted, uh, uh, my bowl is empty. Uh, uh, oh. Give me the other. Uh. It's, it's empty. You ate, you ate all the candy. I'm nervous. I'm going to be a father. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to be sick. <laughs> Uh, could, could I have your attention uh, for just a minute? Um, I seem to have run out of uh, treats, so if you'll come back tomorrow uh, when, when I have a, a fresh supply, and I, I appreciate your, uh, your patience and, and your understanding, and uh, there's really no need for any acts of, uh, of uh, vandalism. <laughs> Specifically speaking to uh, those of you in the warlike... Uh, Costumes. Don't you have anything? We'll take money. Cronkite? <laughs> who, who, who are you? It's me, Deputy Zajac. I'm on safety patrol tonight. All right, let me guess. You ran out of candy. <laughs> See it every year. Poor planning, George. Very poor planning. Well, I explained what happened, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they, they understood. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. You can come in now. The Dybbuk has left the building. Uh, thanks, Ambrose, for helping me out here. Just didn't want George to see me in this condition, you know? You know, next to him, you're the only friend I got on this island. That's a scary Halloween thought. No, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Ambrose. I turned on the lights and I put the book right on that table. And then I went upstairs and when I came back down, that light was off, that book was gone. Well, as you can see, there's no one here. Good night, Leo. Uh, no, I, come on, Ambrose, just stay for a little while, okay? It's late, I'm tired. Good night. Did I uh, ever tell you about my Juliet Prowse story? I don't know who that is. Dad, tell me, let me tell you my Marty Allen story. I don't know who that is either. Well, just tell me the celebrities you do know, and we'll take it from there, okay? Saul Bellow. Saul Bellow. Yeah, Saul Bellow, the comic who the uh, lounge at the Sahara, right? Oh, cute story. <laughs> I was driving him out to uh, meet this broad out in Laughlin, stuck his head up through the moon roof, stepped on the switch, nearly cut him in half. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Um, the Saul Bellow I'm thinking of is the Nobel Prize winning author of Herzog. I don't think he would have been seeing a broad in Laughlin. Everybody's got to relax. Thanks. It's going to be a perfect quiet night. What's that? 
Oh, uh, the retired pro wrestlers of America gather here every Halloween for their for their annual convention. I think you're next door to uh, Chief Big Heart and the Martian, otherwise known as Larry Parisi and Morty Zank. Uh, could, could you ask them to quiet down? Yeah, sure, lady. There's nothing I like more than being put in a submission hold by a man in his 80s. <laughs> Were we disturbing you, pretty lady? Uh, actually, I was about to read. Where's the hubby? Not here. Well then, hello, hello. Uh, actually, um, by not here, I meant he's in the bathroom. Oh, well, in that case, could you ask him, may we borrow the complimentary mini shampoo and conditioner, as the hotel forgot to leave those said luxuriants in our crapper? Uh, you know... <laughs> He, he doesn't like to be disturbed in the bath. He's not here, is he? No. Free advice. Go back to him. Catch things up. Make it work for the sake of that life you're carrying. You must be Chief Bigheart. <laughs> hey, she recognized me. <laughs> the reason you don't recognize this guy is because he didn't give to our business the 1,000% that demands. The hell I did not! I got a plate in my head, you putz! <laughs> okay, the, the, the coast is clear. What were you saying? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm just not sure I have what it takes to be a good father, Dad. I really don't know if I'm ready for this. Shh, I, I hear footsteps. <laughs> Forget it. Crazy old Studi goes to bed early. <laughs> Oh, great. Now I'm, I'm crazy old Studi. <laughs> Dad, let me ask you a question. You think I'm going to be a good father? You'll be a great father. Yeah? Thanks. You know what I should do? I should go down to the Harbor Inn right now. Tell Casey how nervous I've been about becoming a dad, and that's why I've been so cranky lately. She and I need to sit down and talk through this. Ted, 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 Ted. Yeah. That, that's, that's the worst thing you can do. Uh, let, let me give you another piece of advice. It's, sit down. Pregnant women are a little, a little sensitive and, and a bit emotional and insane. <laughs> well, how do you handle that? Well, uh, it's simple, really. Uh, for the next eight weeks, you just say, honey, you look beautiful, and no, I don't think you look fat. <laughs> That would be lying, Dad, and Casey and I promise each other that throughout our marriage, we're always going to be uh, completely and totally honest. <laughs> you, know, you know, you ate all the candy, but boy, you sure have given me a lot of laughs tonight. <laughs> Enough's enough. You guys were great, but you tired me out. <laughs> Ted! Honey? I'm sorry, I was talking with Chief Big Heart in the Martian. <laughs> Honey? It's a long story. Why are you here? Just came by to say goodnight. So, goodnight. Now, is that a good sigh or a bad sigh? Mm. Then I miss you, sigh. Yeah? Want to stay? Yes. But I don't want to interrupt your vacation, so go soak in the tub and read Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Can't. Beyond the Valley of the Dolls is the sequel, and I don't know what's going on because I never read the first one. Well, no problem. I will go down to the bookstore, and I will get you the first one. I'll bring it back here. Mm. <laughs> That's a wonderful idea. See you oh. in a bit. Here's a key. Okay. Can I ask you a question, Ted? Yeah. How do I look? And be honest, okay? Honey, you look beautiful. You don't think I look fat? Not at all. <laughs> I must 
meet this guy at Harris and take him to Joey Clown Pants Bravano. So I find him with a nickel slot smashed out of his mind. Bottom line, he pukes all over the back of my car. I think that's a different John Updike. 300 pounds, platform shoes. I think that's a different John Updike. It's late, Leo. Go upstairs to bed. Uh, Ambrose, Ambrose, please, uh, don't go right now. Uh, just uh, do me one favor. What? Uh, uh, go with me upstairs, all right? Just to check out, see if it's safe, that's all. All right. Thanks. But I assure you, there's no such thing as a ghost, and this house is not haunted. Like Jack. Pleasure. And try to relax, Leo, and don't let your imagination get the better of you. Oh, that's funny. I thought the lights were on. <laughs> Good night, Leo! Don't go away. George and Leo will be right back. Well, folks, got the book, honey. Thanks. Could you bring it to me in the tub? Yeah. Oh, God, I don't want you to look at me. I feel like such a whale in this tub. Honey, you've never looked sexier. Ted, I'm seven months pregnant. I'm carrying about 25 extra pounds here. You don't think I look fat or bloated? Honey, you're glowing, all right? You look beautiful. Yes, you do. <laughs> Dad, what are you... Oh, no, what happened? Did they TP the house? No, 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 no. Knock, knock at the, at the back door. The flaming, flaming bag. <laughs> uh, uh, panicked, panicked. Uh, tried, you know, tried, tried to put it out. Front, <laughs> front door, doorbell rang. <laughs> ran, ran, ran to the front. I, I was, I was, I wasn't, wasn't thinking. I opened the door, and I... And, there, and there's nobody there. <laughs> then there was the laughter. <laughs> oh my God, the, the, the laughter. <laughs> Conductor Joyce Brothers turned a nanny into a lady. That's the cheap, dowdy, matronly sack. But an all new nanny then. Murphy's cancer surgery is over. She's been through a lot. And now the healing begins. We're going to get each other through it, aren't we? Yes, we are. Murphy Brown, sponsored by Ford, CBS Wednesday. Local. I know it's good.